نور مولانا شاہ کریم حسین حاضری مام یا مولا مہربان مدد فرما مدد فرما مشکل کشا مہربان مولا مدد فرما حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل و نعم المولا و نعم النصیر حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل و نعم المولا و نعم النصیر حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل و نعم المولا و نعم النصیر حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل و نعم المولا و نعم النصیر حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل و نعم المولا و نعم النصیر حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل و نعم المولا و نعم النصیر حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل و نعم المولا و نعم النصیر شکر اللہ و الحمدللہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Today I hope to be ambitious and finish this book. It is very amazing. We have been studying different books and I think this is the smallest book which we have studied together. And it is taking the longest. Today I say that I'm ambitious because even if you were, if you have done the pre-reading, the content is not a lot. But the concepts in this, uh, you know, limited content are so high and we really have to understand and take full advantage of it, benefit from this knowledge. So let's see with Mola's mercy, how far can we go? So Alhamdulillah, we are on the last chapter of Ascent of Soul, the nature and the reality of light. And we are continuing with that. We had discussed about the kinds of lights. Three kinds of lights are there. And we can take it as three aspects as well. And we had discussed the ethical light, Iklakyat, which is also a light. We were talking about Rohani Noor, but we had not been able to finish it. We had talked about gradual light of spirituality. And we had discussed that. Inshallah, today we have just these three headings, but let's see how far can we go. So with Mola's mercy, let's talk about the spiritual color. Ruhani Rang, what is that? And what? why are we discussing that? Very interesting. We do know these beautiful colors are there in our nature. Color itself is the light of guidance. Now, how can that be? So what Allama Sahib teaches us that we, when we look at our nature, our world, there are so many beautiful colors. The external world, which also belongs to world, internal world also belongs to God. But the external world is so colorful and so beautiful and it is visible to all of us. We can access all these colors. But when we talk of spiritual colors, those colors are not visible. These are very special colors, very distinct, distinctive colors. And this color, which is Ruhani Rang, it is the light of guidance. And when we talk about the light of guidance, nur e hidayat it also includes Islam in itself, which means submission, Iman, faith, is also inclusive of that. Meaning whenever we talk of this Ruhani Rang, it is actually hidden in our soul and it is in the spiritual world. So our physical eyes, which we see such a beautiful colors here, but when we talk of Ruhani Rang, we cannot see that with our physical eyes. Very beautifully, Allah says in Quran, in chapter 2, verse 138, that it is the color of Allah. And who is better than Allah at coloring? So 
definitely we worship him and if we are blessed with that eyes to be able to see all the rohani colors of course we will be saying who is better than him though when we look at the nature we get mesmerized imagine just being there in the spring time walking in the garden beautiful flowers amazing beauty we see and we feel such a joy and happiness now just imagine if we are walking in a rohani garden what would be the colors can we even imagine can we even you know calculate that level of happiness which we will feel the only way we can imagine when we are physically in a worldly garden and sensing and being aware of our being feeling happiness from every pore every particle of our being surrounded by the colors of the nature now close your eyes and think of the colors of spirituality going above and beyond into the spiritual realms and seeing the gardens what would be the colors like so it is very very beautiful to think of ruhani ram right spiritual ram alhamdulillah and of course he is the best he no one is better than him no one is like him in the colors however these colors which we talk about are ruhani colors though in the nature also it is he and only him it is his creation it is all his beauty that we see all the beautiful colors in our surroundings in our environment have you ever imagined have you ever expressed our get, gratitude for all the colors we see in our nature it is all due to his mercy when we are in gratitude in realization of the colors here then only we can imagine it is all about imagination actually it begins with imagination that what would be the color of ruhani world how you know pleasing that would be for our be so we are talking about color of god and who is better than him in coloring so spiritual color is mentioned in the quran mostly in the verses which are related to nu resurrection and paradise very interestingly color is mentioned in related to these three topics noor resurrection and paradise and another verse which very beautifully mentions uh, color is actually chapter 2 surah bakara verses from 67 to probably 77 it is about a, a cow an ox in the time of hazrat musa alaihi salam there were some people who had murdered somebody and they very innocently uh, hiding it actually and hiding it and innocently asking hazrat musa alaihi salam that what do we do this person has been killed murdered how do we find the killer etc etc and hazrat musa alaihi salam actually gives them the direction that allah wants you to uh, you know sacrifice a cow find a cow which is yellow in color and then you have to sacrifice and very interestingly these people who were themselves the killers you know sometimes we have to understand those who sin and they think they are very smart and they argue they present their own intellect in front of our natik imam that what do you mean why do we need to do that what kind of cow do we need does it need to be old or young or should it be you know working cow etc etc they asked so many questions and what prophet musa says that i seek refuge in allah from being among the ignorant now of course there is a just beautiful story about this ox and it has tabili meaning in it but for us today when we are discussing this spiritual color what are we understanding here in context of these verses what we are saying that the colors are also mentioned in quran different verses having different tabila this specific verse which is about an ox it does the tabil is about the initial spirituality remember we talked about it last time that light is seen gradually 
So whenever someone sees the initial spirituality, it represents the carnal soul. It appears beautiful, fascinating, just like this ox, which as Musa Salam was asking them to bring. And they were very proud in their heart, hiding their sin and saying things to Prophet Musa as if they knew more than him. Anyways, what we are realizing here that when we walk on the path of Ruhaniyat and we do feel this joy and happiness, we feel ourselves good about ourselves. Remember, this is all initial spirituality. Initial spirituality appears beautiful, fascinating, but actually it is the part of the carnal soul. And it is important to slaughter that carnal soul, which is appearing to be beautiful. I am pious, I am good, I have my reasons, and I'm doing the right thing. We use our intellect to justify our own wrongdoings. And that's what exactly in this, you know, 10 verses is being talked about, about those people in Bani Israel. But here we are talking about the spiritual light. In the beginning, when uh, an Abid, the word Abid means the one who does do the Ibadah. An Abid sees beautiful colors in their Ibadah. Remember, it's a beginning light. Do not be stopped there. Continue to go further and beyond. So it is very important to remember that Momin sees this light through in their heart through the Rahmat, mercy of the true guide. It is the first observation of a spiritual color which opens the eye of the heart of the Momin for the first time. Remember, in the beginning, it is carnal soul. But the way we further continue to go in our journey, at every new station, it is the first time. At every new station, it is the first time and we continue to kill our carnal soul because it is not easy to kill the carnal soul. And it is very easy to think of our own selves very good and very pious. But we got to be very critical in looking at ourselves the way Yasmin Saiba sang this Ginan. Beautiful. Sahib Lese Hisa. And he's going to show it to us that how we have been egoistic but defending ourselves as very intellectuals and knowledgeable or pious. So we have to be very critical of our own sinning. Spiritual color, meaning that when we are blessed with some colors, do not let it go to your head. Be very grounded to the earth, letting ourselves realize that this is not the progress. I do not need to let it go to my head. I have to stay grounded to be able to kill my carnal soul and continue my journey. So this is the essence which is connected to the last topic we had discussed that there is a gradual uh, appearance of the light in the Rohani journey, right? The next heading is spiritual faculties. We do know that with our eyes, when we see there is light and we see the light, right? Everything is evident, visible. But if the lights are turned off, it is all blinding. There is nothing there. Similarly, when our ruhani eyes, our inner eyes, our batini eyes, our batini senses, when they are closed, it is as if it is night around us. What does night do? Night hides everything in the world. Whereas day makes it evident and visible to us. Similarly, when we have the light of guidance, nure hidayat, which comes from imam, for our ruh and ruhaniyat, when we take that light of guidance in our being to elevate ourselves, to follow the guidance of the imam, the darkness of negligence, and ignorance will continue to disappear. Everything happens step by step. But when we are following the guidance of Imam, we are entering into the zone of the light. And the darkness of ignorance or negligence continues to go away. And we are now in a place which is daylight, meaning our eyes are able to see. So in this connection, 
there are various spiritual powers and faculties which actually becomes actual. Remember, right now when I'm talking to you, it is all physical senses. You are seeing me through your physical senses. But we all know that there are Bhatni senses as well. It is those Bhatni senses that we are talking about which will become actual. When we have Ruhani progress, we experience Ruhani elevation. We also have this Ruhani power which comes from Bhatni senses of seeing, hearing, smelling, speaking and touching all in Bhatni terms in Ruhani, in spirituality. These five faculties are called Bhatni senses or internal senses. And through these five senses, we continue to receive this Nura Hidayat, the light of guidance in the heart of Momina Salam. What does it mean? It means that the light of guidance, not only, you know, it helps us to see, it gives us the spiritual illumination, but it also gives us this spiritual ability of having this inner senses, this Bhatni senses, to be able to see, hear, smell, speak, and even touch. And how do we understand these different states? How does this light of guidance helps us, guides us? So we have to look at this Hadith Kutsi. It is a very important Hadith Kutsi. Because remember, <clears throat> the objective is that we also learn about ourselves. These are big words. We are understanding it, but really we have to apply it on ourselves to make it simpler, easier, and to find out for ourselves, how do I attain that light? So this is a beautiful hadith Kutsi. I hope you all know what is the difference between the hadith and hadith Kutsi now. So this is words of Allah said to us by the Prophet Muhammad. What does he say? My servant always seeks my closeness through additional prayers until I love him. Additional prayers, nawafil ibadat. Until there is no nawafil ibadat, there is no closeness. We have to realize it is all about getting close to that noor. So nawafil ibadat is extremely important. It is all those ibadat which is not must which is not compulsory, meaning each one of us have to come forward, sacrifice, invest to be able to say that yes, we are offering something, Mona, Nawafir Ibadat. A time comes when he starts loving that Mumin Asad. Remember step by step when I love him and that Mumin Asalik is the one who continues to kill the ego. Remember the first light? Oh, I'm happy. I saw this and I saw that. I am good and I am this and I am that. It is all from carnal soul. So we continue to stay humble, grounded and continue to do more and more until he loves us. And very beautifully, then he becomes the ear. The ear we hear, it is now through his light. He says, I become his eye, which he sees with. I become his hand, which he grasps, and I become his foot by which he walks. Now, where is the moment now? If it is all him, where is that moment? Nowhere to be found. Now, this is such a beautiful hadith, such a beautiful hadith. We really have to reflect and compare ourselves. Is it me or is it him? That dis distinction, that distance, that connection, have we made it or not? So Allah Sahib says for the wise people, there is no doubt that these attributes first belong to Imam Zaman. Because he is Sarapanu. All over he's just light. He's complete no. So first it is about Hazrima. Because these attributes, it has to be in a person. Because Allah is abstract no. He doesn't have eyes, he doesn't have feet or ears or eyes. So who are we talking about? First and foremost, we are talking about Imam e Zaman because we see him as having eyes, ears, foot, hand. All what we are seeing in this 
Hadith Kutsi, it is actually first about our Imam. Imam is our true guide. He is the one who gives us the light of guidance. He is the wise spirit, Khalifa al Khuda. And he has come to for us in this world as representative of God for whole humanity. Now, not only humanity, superficially, exteriorly, or physically, but in spirituality as well. Because we are on the chapter of coming close and understanding the nature of light. And this is spiritual light. So Imam being present here in this physical world is also here for our spiritual progress, spiritual therapy. And he is Imam of the whole humanity as well. We need to remember that. So what we are saying? We are saying it is the act of his guidance, which is considered the act of God. So when Imam gives us Hidayat, it is the Hidayat of God. And we do say this in Dua, right? Ya Luzina Amanu, Atiullaha, wa Ati Rasul, wa Ulil Amr Minkum. He is the Ulil Amr Minkum. So anything and everything which we see from Imam, it is the act of God. Otherwise, we remember, God doesn't have ears and eyes or any physical, you know, uh, physical body. He doesn't. He's an abstract mood. So when we have understood this, you know, Hadith, Hadith Al-Qudsi, we realize the essence is actually light of guidance. The fountainhead of physical, spiritual, and intellectual faculties. And it is, it, it's nourishment. Remember when we are talking about physical, spiritual, intellectual faculties, meaning physical senses, batni senses, aklani senses. What did I say? There are three different pairs of senses. We knew about the Bhatni senses, what we sometimes forget, that there is another level, which is intellectual level. So there are senses which we have physically, then there are Bhatni senses, and then there are Aklani senses, because everything is at three levels. And it is the Imam whose light of guidance is the fountainhead who nourishes us at all these three levels. How? Through the Nure Hidayat, through the light of the guidance. Meaning this light of the guidance has everything in it. Every kind of feeling, comprehension, you take anything and everything, it is within this light of guidance. Light has many meanings and is everything. So the guidance of the eyes is in the form of illumination, meaning there'll be light, roshni, aankhon ki roshni. The guidance for the ears will be in the form of hearing, speech and voice. The guidance for the nose will be, we will be able to smell different fragrances, which are not physically here, but we'll be smelling it. The guidance of the tongue is such that the speech becomes miraculous naturally miraculous speech. Now, how do we understand this for ourselves? When we truly understand Imam, the way he is guiding us and we understand his guidance. Welcome job, man. When we understand his guidance and when we are doing Nawafil Ibadat, what is going to happen? Somebody's mute is off. Mumin is Salih, when he's blessed with these mercy of Imam through their ibadat, ibadat ilmiya and ibadat amliya, through knowledge and action, meaning it covers everything. When a Mumin is Salih is doing that, what happens? We have heard, when we have discussed the Betul Khyal um, classes and Betul Khyal classes, the explanation of Betul Khyal we had discussed, that how Mumin is Salik sees things when the eyes are closed, but they are seeing it. They hear things which are not happening around them. They hear the voices which are not physically visibly be seen that it is being said here. They hear words. They smell fragrance. For example, you know, sitting in Ibadat, you smell soap. 
or even bleach or even any kind of fragrance making you think about cleanliness, meaning your soul is being purified. Ali Allah gives different examples for us to help communicate so we can understand in the light of knowledge. So smelling or having this fragrance of paradise, which are not physically present. And then finally also having this blessed speech, miraculous speech. All this can happen for Momin and Salih when they, their actions in the are right, meaning they're following the taqwa, they're doing the Ismail ibadat, and they're doing Nawafil ibadat. All this will help them open up their spiritual faculties, meaning batni senses. And then there is surely intellectual senses as well. So spiritual faculty, we continue the light when we see the sun here. When we see the sun comes out, the sunlight in the physical world gives us so many things. Our life, literally our planet revolves. It grows, it is living and breathing because of the sunlight. Our life heavily depends on the sun. So what do we see when we see the sun and the sunlight? We see the sunlight, okay, the sunlight is the one who is driving the weather, uh, different seasons or climate change, it is all related to sun. But when we look at the sun or the powerhouse, which is due to the sun, what do we realize? We don't see much, it is just a sun. But then if you were to talk to scientists, they will tell you how the solar energy is being used to make these powerhouses, to create electricity, to direct the water, or to have our fields, you know, growing crops. All that requires for us to go into detail, which we don't, because scientists do that for us. And if we were to talk to the scientists, they will tell us that in this light, there is power. There are so many power within it that it helps us replenishes our planet or our water in very many different ways. So I'm not going into detail of that, but we do know that this sunlight has innumerable things within it. It has so many countless powers within it. Only scientists can tell us with all their you know, scientific knowledge that how the sun is helping us live in the planet, right? We briefly know the climate change and growing of the crops and whatnot, but there are so many processes so many powers are involved within it. For us, it is simply seeing the sun. Similarly, when we talk of Ruhani Roshni, when we talk of spiritual uh, progress or spiritual light, we see Imam and that is it. But when we understand that this Imam, when he gives us the light of guidance, it is Noor in itself. When he gives us the light of guidance and when we take that light of guidance to our soul and to our intellect, the distance between our physical being to our spiritual being and the intellectual being, there's a distance. There's a gap. That's why we do not know what is in our soul. When our peer saw that, peer said, Atma Ram Tame Bada Ginani. Peer was able to see that. But why aren't we able to see it? Because we see Ima. But what we don't realize that Within that imam, that personality and the guidance we get, there are sources of power in him. It's countless powers which are there in the guidance. It is only when we meet the conditions which we've been talking about, we will be able to receive that light in our soul, in our intellect, to be able to overcome that gap and have that connection built into our own soul our own intellect. Otherwise, we are living physical life. We are using our soul to do physical work, worldly work. We are using our intellect to learn worldly knowledge. Everything is physical because we don't see it as a spiritual being. We don't see ourselves as spiritual beings as well. We come to knowledge session, we do Ibadah do Bandagi to remind ourselves that there is more to me just what is being seen. So what we are saying that when we look at the material light, 
material light has so many powers yes but it has nothing it has no spiritual power and intellectual power that power belongs to imam only the world the worldly powers or worldly things or worldly light may bring us wealth and growth and life and what not food itself right but we are not able to get any spiritual light or intellectual light from the physical sun or the physical worldly sources it is only through the imam so what are we saying the attributes of a spiritual light are so perfect that god has made him his vice chairman on the face of the earth that is the imam is imam imam has all the spiritual powers for us to be blessing us with this hidayat when we work on that hidayat we are the ones who will be blessed with this spiritual faculties meaning batni senses and it is all imam's attributions it is all imam's spiritual light which is perfect and that is why he is the locus of manifestation in front of us to give us that light for to us he has that light and he can give us that light but for that we do need to do our own work which we've been understanding in this chapter the next is intellectual light we have been we have started to talk about it but now we will go into detail of the intellectual light it is extremely important to realize that whenever we talk we talk of ruhani roshni ruhani senses but there is one more level which exists and that is at the level of intellect and it is the highest rank of light which is intellectual light aklani nur we are learning about nur so we knew about ruhani nur ruhani roshni but then there is aklani nur or aklani roshni so highest rank is of akal the middle rank is of ruhani roshni and the first or the lowest rank is at the physical level which is physically we see our being but remember when we talk of imam physically he is light as well we have to always remember that physically he is also light so when we look at human we ourselves also see at three levels with knowledge we realize that we are also at three levels but what we are not seeing that when we look at the personality of imam apparently what we see his physical body what do we not see the soul what do we not see is the intellect so how do we understand what is hidden is the soul but hidden of the hidden is the intellect very interestingly very interestingly we say that we cannot see our soul the soul is hidden right now when we talk of akal it is batin ka batin the soul is batin ka batin can we imagine that that we are struggling to get to the batin but when we talk of the aklani no it is batin ka bhi batin hidden of hidden so we have to understand that there is so much more we need to learn and grow and understand but when we call it batin ka bhi batin what are we meaning we are saying it is abstract it is not visible but it is felt it manifest itself in spirituality how when we do zikr when we go into the world of imagination when we do khayal when we learn in the ilmi point we are reflecting and asking beautiful questions all that understanding when we get and we say ah i understand it now just recently in fact today only one of the friends said that i was listening to the lecture and i realize and understand now that how chandra is uh roshni for me is the day of ruhani tarakki it's a day of new moon now i understand it how long we've been attending chandra but that aha moment happened now why and how when we realize with knowledge that there is more to our being and it is not limited to ruhani nu but there is more and that is aklani nu so finally this friend says oh i understand i understand meaning 
we became one step closer to that Atma who is Gnani. But how did that happen? It happened when we started seeking knowledge. As human, our intellect is the highest here. Do you know our brain is only of three pounds? And of course, our weight, whatever our weights are, three pounds is nothing in front of our physical body weight. But it is this smallest organ, our brain, which has intellect within it. When we utilize that on the path of Ruhani Tarakki, then we understand the gap starts closing up. So it is such a beautiful understanding that we see that the illumination of the knowledge, Ilmul Yakin, comes through the body. And then we have Enul Yakin, Eye of Certainty, which happens at the level of the soul, but it starts at the level of the body. And then finally, we have Hakkul Yakin, which is achieved through intellect. But even for that level, everything starts physically. So it is very important when we listen and we, when we don't work on it, when we don't do take those actions which we are needing to take, we will never reach to this level or this level. So yes, there is Ilmul Yakin, which is a very important step. That Ilmul Yakin will help us to reach to Anul Yakin, the eye of certainty and the truth of certainty. We will be able to get there. Oh, this thing is not going on. Oh, I'm not sure how to remove that. My apology. So when we talk of... Um, let me do this. I, okay. I was able to make it move. All right. So beautiful Ginan, our peers have taught us Eji Be Lochan Sarvene or Vidya Lochan Tran Sapat Lochan Dharamna Jo Vichare Jan. Right? We all know two eyes, everybody has it. And we use these eyes to learn knowledge. But then those who are learned it, they have three eyes. But then imagine having seven eyes. How? When someone reflects, uses this brain to learn the knowledge of ill, of true knowledge, of Ruhani Roshni. Then peace says, Those who seek knowledge, they will attain how many eyes? 100,000 eyes. Now, does it make sense when we say, Ilmul Yakin will help us to take help us to get to Ainul Yakin. How? Every time when we learn, actually we are acquiring one eye, one eye. The more eyes we have, because in order to see what is hidden, invisible to us, which is our soul, we need that many eyes to be able to see the soul. So with knowledge, what is happening? We all are attaining these eyes one by one, one by one, one by one. So those who understand the understanding of the mysteries, meaning essence, the tavi of the soul, they are the best among us all. And Alhamdulillah, that's why we are gathered here. That's what we are doing. So this is another important uh, point, which I would like to explain it through pictures first, to be able to go further and explain the concept. So we do understand this is our universe, right? Our physical world. And then it talks about dais or podium, which is known as kursi. So there is this, think of this as a podium. Somebody sits on here to be able to speak to the people in the universe, right? So this is the dais or the podium, which is called in Quran kursi. All right. And then on top of that, there is throne or takhat, which is called arsh. In Quranic language, it is called arsh. So there is universe, dais or podium, which is called kursi in Quran. And then there is arsh or throne. Now this example will become very easy when we look at this picture. So jamaat is sitting here. This is the universe, the jamaat. Okay. This is the kursi, dais or podium or stage where someone can speak us from, right? So this is the kursi, dais or podium, and this is the throne. And on the throne, 
is the janashin, is the imam. When imam speaks to us, he gives us the light of guidance. He is sitting on the throne, on the arsh. And arsh is on the kursi. And kursi is on the universe. Stay with me. I'm trying to build a concept here. So what we are looking here, this is the universe. This is the physical world. We can take it as our physical body, physical light. All these examples would apply to it. Then we look at this universe. On top of that universe, there is a spiritual world or soul or spiritual light. And then on top of that, there is takhat of aklani nur, intellectual world, intellect, intellectual light. Whatever term you want to use, it can be applied to this picture. Now, when we look at again this picture here, this is dais or kursi in Quranic language. This is also can be named as universal soul. Nafsekul. This is also Nafsekul. And when we talk of Takht, throne, or arsh, that is Aklekul. So if we were to learn the terms, if we want to learn the terms, this is Jismekul. Universe can have one name of Jismekul, Nafsekul, Aklekul. In Quran, for example, in Ayah Kursi, Allah says, uh, that everything is encompassed in the kursi. Meaning, this kursi has encompassed the whole universe within it. What am I saying? In the nafsekul, the whole universe is within the nafsekul. And where is nafsekul? Nafsekul has been encompassed by aklekul. Again, same picture, trying to help us visualize that we've been talking about this concept, but we need to have some imagination, some visual, you know, uh, uh, picture to be able to think about it and have this concept very clearly in our mind. That yes, this is the universe. This is the physical light. This is the physical being. All physical related, it's a universe. But on top of the universe, there is this kursi. Which Allah mentions in Quran, Ayatul Kursi. And He says, everything is encompassed within His Kursi, which is universal soul. So, Kursi has encompassed the whole universe within it. And on the Kursi, there is Arsh, there is throne. Remember, P says in Ginan, Aras and Kuras, these are the terms which are from Quran. So, Arash, Arsh or Aras in Gujarati, or throne in English is the place where Imam is sitting. And that place is also known as Aklekul. In other words, what am I saying? Imam is himself Aklekul, Nafsekul, and in that Nafsekul, the whole universe is encompassed within him. So again, to summarize that you all are with me in understanding, Though it is very simple, but we have to have a very strong, powerful imagination to understand this concept. It will make it so much easier for us to understand that we use so many different terms, but it can be applied to one thing. So our conceptual understanding, the whole map, roadmap is very clear in our mind. Intellectual light covers everything. But within that intellectual light, there's a spiritual light which covers everything. When we are learning, when we are going step by step and we are growing and learning, we only know our physical world, physical light, physical action, three times dua physical, sitting in ibadat physical, zikr by lips, all physical. But that is the beginning. That is what we see. That's what we believe. That's what we have iman on because we only see physical. But when we start seeking knowledge, we start learning that there is more to our universe which is invisible. This is all invisible. Allegorically, we are seeing this picture and we saw the picture of Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah sitting on the Gadi when he was only eight years old, not, only, not even eight complete years old, seven years and ten months. But it is just to help us understand what we are talking about because these terms we have to understand. 
So when we are saying the spiritual light, spiritual light comprises the universal body, right? And then intellectual light comprises the spiritual light. And how are we able to distinguish, understand, realize it? All through knowledge. This all understanding is coming through this knowledge. So this explanation shows to us that the light of intellect is the light of the throne of the kingdom of God. Upon which, what is there? What is there on the throne? True unity. Nafsin wahida. We say this term. But do we really understand, conceptualize, visualize? Nafsun wahida. It is the perfect recognition at this maqam, at this station. So from this what we are seeing, strong and powerful evidence of the rank of the intellectual light. This is the power of intellectual light. Now let us look at ourselves, humans. If you look at ourselves, our intellect is also on top of us, high above in our body. And we say atma, our soul or heart, we use this word interchangeably, kalb or ru or nafs. Let's say here, and then our physical being. When we look at ourselves in the mirror, we only see our physical body. Our brain is hidden in our head. Our soul is hidden in our being. But what we are realizing through this chapter, that what we are seeing is totally incomplete. It is not even the half the truth. It is just one part. Two parts are hidden from our eyes. So what we are saying, that when we look at our physical being, what do we say? Oh, I do not know this. I cannot memorize this. I have this flaw. I have these limitations. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. All the flaws and criticism and minimizing ourselves. But what did Mola Ali teach us? Do you, self, do you see yourself as a small being? Mona says, realize the whole universe is within you. If this whole universe, this huge, powerful, strong universe is within us, remember that this universe also is encompassed by spiritual light and intellectual light. What was missing? Our own limited vision, not being able to see how the beauty is hidden from our eyes. Remember, our soul is hidden, but our intellect is hidden of the hidden. So, all these concepts makes us understand the huge, you know, universe. But our own self as well, very small being, negligible being. But we are understanding the whole thing very beautifully. At a minor, you know, level and at the major level. We both, we are understanding the both the things, right? Now, I intentionally chose this picture of Hazri Imam. When we look at Hazri Imam's picture, what do we see? Oh, Mala Papa has a cane in his hand. Is he well? What happened? Immediately looking at the physical body. Are we learning how do we need to look at Imam? Imam is not just his physical body. What we are not seeing, the hidden, the soul and the intellect. Though his body is exalted too, remember that. He is a perfect man. But how minimizing we are when we look at Imam. We neglect the nur and we start talking about Imam physically. So very important when we are in the knowledge journey, we have to realize how do we speak? What thoughts do come, we allow to come into our mind? It is extremely important. So when we realize, we have realized about our being, oh, that we are universe and we are this and that, do not forget that he is Amirul Mominin. He is our chief. He is our leader. He is the perfect man. And we all are imperfect. It is only in merging in him that we will become perfect. So how do we look at this perfect man? Can we see any imperfection in him? No, not at all. Because it is not about the physical body. Would we have to realize that it is all about the noor in him, which is Ruhani noor and which is Aklani noor. Though physically also he is noor. But when we talk of physical body, we have to realize that he is, he has two bodies. 
One is physically because we can see physically we are humans. So he comes to this world as his wise gerent physically. But the body which we don't see, it is the jismel latif, the subtle body. That body covers the entire universe. Entire universe. So what we are understanding? That the true guide is the universal intellect. Our imam is the universal intellect. He is the universal soul. He is the throne as well as the dais, as well as the kursi. Or it is imam is imam. Terms are given to us for understanding of different concepts. But application of that concept is all imam. Again, when we are learning, we separate things out because we need to learn step by step. But essence, mugs, remains the same. It is all imam and imam. So we still continue with the intellectual light. And this is very beautiful words, which is said uh, by Maulana Rumi. Maulana Rumi, when he realized, what did he say? Akle kul o nafse kul marde khuda ast. Arshu kursi ramadan kazwe juda ast. The man of God, that is the perfect man, is himself the universal intellect and the universal soul. Do not think that the throne and the dais are separate from him. What are we saying here? That his intellect is the universal intellect. His divine throne, his soul is the dais as well as the universal soul. Are we feeling gratitude in our heart that Imam is with us? Yes, now we reach to the mazhar, locus of manifestation. Imam is that sarup of nur which has manifested. We also call him locus of manifestation of the light of intellect. Remember intellect which is hidden of hidden. It is invisible. We cannot see it. The soul is also hidden. What is apparent, what we can see is the personality. So in order to understand all this, what we are realizing and learning, that the light of intellect does not appear by itself. It is his grace. It is his mercy that when we walk on the path, we are able to comprehend these things. And it is only mentally and in the thoughts. Because nobody can see my brain. Can you see my brain right now? No. But you, what you can see is the comprehension. Similarly, when we are looking at Imam and we are trying to understand this light, how do we explain this light? We don't see it. It is only can be understood when we have the comprehension of this light. And it is all in our brain, in our thoughts. What do we do to express this all? We take help of different examples. And all that is due to his grace that we are able to give different examples of Ruhani. And we talked about a few examples that how when a Momin and Salik does do Ruhani Taraki in Batin, in his Ibadat, how he is able to have his senses feeling and realizing more than what our physical senses can do. Meaning Batni senses opened up. But then there are Aklani senses as well. And they also need to be opened up. But how do we see it? We cannot. It is only within the comprehension. It is only in our mind, in our brain, up in our thoughts. And that is why, you know, when we talk about Ruhani Taraki, the next step is the world of imagination. Because it's all inside. Nobody can see it. But we use different pictures or different examples to help our world of, you know, uh, world of imagination get nourished. So we can think through things. We can have this khayal in our mind to be able to visualize and understand what we are talking about. But it is all due to his grace. It is all his mercy, not anybody's ability, not my ability, not our ability. It is all due to the mercy of Imam. So it is his grace that we receive internal senses, spiritual senses. How? We have learned that already. But we are realizing here, we are learning about that we used to think of only Ruhani senses, Batni senses, Ruhani senses. But there is more to our, the, our senses and that is Aklani. It is that Aklani senses which will help us to see the Mazhar. We see physically, Imam is 
visible to us apparently, but when we talk of his subtle body, it is not visible to us. So we need all these senses to be nourished, to be activated, to be able to see that jisme latif of Imam. Physically, he has manifested in our physical world, giving us the light of guidance, helping us nourish our life, our you know, soul and our intellect. Those who do not follow the guidance, there is no doubt about that. Those who do not follow the guidance, they will go astray. And that is why Imam has two titles, Imam Nas and Imam Muttaqeen. So we can understand only those who are righteous, those who are Imani, those who will follow the guidance the way it is ought to be followed, they will be blessed with the light like daylight, meaning their Rohani senses, their Aklani senses all opened up. So there's another heading there, which is about real nature of light. So we've been talking about the light in so many different terms and names and examples. But what is the real nature of light? What is the light? You know, this is a difficult question. How do we understand these things? It is difficult, right? So beautifully, Allah Sahib talks about that the real fountain of the fountain head of light is actually intellect. Truly, where the nur is coming from, it is from intellect. Because the rank of the intellectual light or universal intellect is the highest. So it is that light which emits comes out from that universal intellect. How does it comes out or how do we see that? It is in the form of knowledge. It is in the form of knowledge. When we seek knowledge, the darkness is removed and we are in the light so we are able to see things. So what we are saying, light of intellect is like a pearl which always spreads the light of knowledge and wisdom. Again, we have taken the example of pearl as an allegory, but we are talking about the light of knowledge and wisdom. Just like we had seen the sun, the fountainhead of our physical universe, giving us light, material light, for this universe to survive and exist. Similarly, there is a light, which is the light of universal intellect, which is Imam, which gives continuously light to us. But for that, the earth has to be ready to receive the light. And we've talked about this concept as well. So I will not go into it in detail, but we have to remind ourselves that there are conditions constantly. Every point in time, when we understand something, there is a condition, right? So we have to always remind ourselves. So when we are talking about this illumination, this Roshni, this light of intellect, it is through this, in this state of knowledge. And it is immaterial. It does not appear uh, to the external senses. Even knowledge has darja. Remember that. It doesn't uh, appear to our external senses. Why? Because it is hidden of hidden. We can only learn from the books, bookish knowledge, right? But what we gain in our own batni tarakki, our own aklani tarakki, which we see in the example of Allah Masai, we cannot see that except if we were to pick up his book and read what he has written actually about his own experiences and understand through his journey to have that illumination within us so we can understand that how our external senses will help us to get to what is hidden from our eyes. Then there is a hidden of hidden. All will become visible to us. Similarly, those who do not uh, work on getting this knowledge the ignorance will remain there. There'll be no control. There'll be no opportunity. There'll be always darkness. Why? Physically we see Imam. Physically we see universe. Physical life matters. Physical progress matters. It is all about physical. Definitely that is the life of an ignorant. So what we are saying that those who are materialistic in the physical world they do not understand the light because they don't have the knowledge. Simple as that. They only understand the darkness of the world. They will not be able to distinguish, differentiate between different types of lights. They will not be able to differentiate different types of darkness. 
for them, the darkness is, if I turn off the light, it is nighttime, nothing is visible. And that is the darkness. But there is a darkness at the soul level. There is a darkness at the intellect level. Remember, that's what we are talking about. If we don't have knowledge, we cannot understand that. What are we trying to discuss here? The real nature of light. How can we attain that? Only through the knowledge. So to continue the same thing, so intellectual light is hidden, but manifested how? Through knowledge. Knowledge means to know and the object of which is in reality. It is God himself. It is Imam who is the nur e embodied light. How do we get that? Through his guidance. It is manifested through the light of guidance. So we sing this beautiful kalam. You know, friends do sing it, but have you ever reflected this kalam verse Inam de Inam de with this chapter? What do we say in this kalam? Salik bi tu, maslak bi tu, mehfil bi tu, manzil bi tu, maksad bi tu, hasil bi tu, mola karim, mola karim. We say this. Look at the meaning. You are the salik, meaning traveler, and the path. You are the assembly, and you are the destination. You are the purpose, and you are the end. Who? Mola karim, mola karim. All what we do on this journey, any kind of khidmat, riyazat, ibadat, taqwa, we are doing it for our imam. If we are lovers of imam, that is what we need to do. Because it is all about him. It is not about me and you, us. No, we don't matter. It is all about imam. When we become one with him, when we become that salih, thinking that it is you I walk in, it is you I seek, you are my destination. Then that stage comes. Me or tu ki do ichua. Right? Which Kalame Mola, Mola Ali teaches us. So again, that illumination of the light of intellect is yakin. It is certainty. Remember, Iman also has darja. The word Iman is from yakin, which is certainty. So certainty, we do know. Ilmul yakin, enul yakin, haqqul yakin. It is also in darja. And through Yaqeen, through the knowledge we get Yaqeen and Yaqeen helps us to Shanaq, recognition. And we were talking somewhere else, Shanaq te jisme imam. First, we need to have this recognition of the physical being of imam, physical body, how he is moved. Then only we can progress to other level. Because what do we see imam? As physical body, having a cane in his hand? No, there is more than that to his physical being which we need to learn to see. So at the place of the truth of certainty, haqqul yakin, there is complete recognition of God. So first, we have to seek knowledge to be able to have that batni eyes opened up with zikr ibadat taqwa. Remember the whole deal. Do not miss out on anything. And then comes the ruhani roshni, aklani roshni, mafi. Then comes the intellectual senses. So to summarize, the intellectual light is through knowledge. We will get knowledge. We will get wisdom. The guidance we get, we will get certainty and recognition. And very beautifully, Allah Sahib ends it so beautifully that when we hear the words revelation, which our Prophet received, the wahi, he was inspired, right? The word is ilham. And we seek divine help. We were seeking divine help, ta'id, and success, which is tawfiq. All these are due to him. It is only with the knowledge which teaches us how to do ibadat. It is knowledge which teaches us how to have ethics to help us grow, progress in our ibadat. Because what happens when we read this, the fundamental and ultimate reality of such words and terms is one, knowledge, ill. Immediately we will have someone, what about the ibadat? What about this ma'azam? But understanding of how to recite the Ismayazam, understanding the progress through Ismayazam can only come when we have the knowledge. Realization why we are not progressing with the Ibadat of Ismayazam, knowledge will tell us, oh, there is no taqwa in me. Right? So all what we learn and realize, it is all through this knowledge. So here we end this beautiful, amazing, powerful book a scent of soul. And this was too, truly amazing journey for me. I do not know about you, but I thoroughly enjoyed this book more than any other book which we have done. Shukran lillah, walhamdulillah, shukran lillah, walhamdulillah. 
سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ انڈیڈ اٹ از سو بیوٹیفل ٹو ہیئر اباؤٹ وی آلویز سی دیٹ وی نیڈ ٹو نو مور اباؤٹ اسپرچل لائٹ ہاؤ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ریسیو دا لائٹ اینڈ دین وی لرن اباؤٹ انٹلیکچل لائٹ آلسو سو اٹ میکس اٹ مچ مور یو نو our our brain starts working what 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 are we talking about right so it's like some fruit for uh, thought but when mola talks about lifelong learning i feel like that it is all about our intellectual growth because this growth will not only help us in our physical life but this topic actually taught us that it will also help us in spiritual life and with with that intellect guiding us from right to wrong or or you know the progress in in our spiritual journey it is amazing the question comes that then sometimes we do hear like in ii kursi it says that um you cannot encompass of anything without uh what he desires for you how do we understand that two different concepts so i understand so this question i think somebody asked yesterday when yesterday or day before that uh when we um uh, hear this that he gives whom he whom he is pleased with and on the other hand it is us who have to work hard remember we do have free will as human as humans we have free will we right now are choosing to be in this amy mafil one could have chosen to be watching movie or tv whatever right so it's a choice which we have we have the power of choice when we make right choices when we walk on the path meaning when we are truly desiring to become close to him and remember when we are desiring to become close to him we are doing nawafil ibadat and by doing nawafil ibadat by working on that knowledge which we learn definitely he will be pleased with us because that's what he says that no one can come close to me except through nawafil ibadat so anyone who makes that decision makes that choice that i want to do more he will he or she will be blessed so it is very important to realize that wherever we take the action of doing the right thing we will be blessed remember our peer says that he is imam is someone who jane chit ki chori meaning even a single thought intention a good intention a good thought he knows it everything and he he um, another giran says maro sami to evo jikko no no rakhe bhag ek var sami ne aali sami aale so so var my mola is such that he does not keep anybody's debt on him if we do one good deed he multiplies and returns it to us so how can we complain even the problem is again when we look at ourselves we see flaws deficiencies weakness and i am all with you i see that too and i need to remember that i have so many flaws because we are imperfect how can we become better by watching ourselves check pulse and continuously applying that knowledge like the first step is taqwa actually i would say not even ibadat but taqwa because our peers have teach taught us in ginans our imam has given us farami kalam e mola full of taqwa if someone does ibadat but does not follow the taqwa there is no way one can progress in ibadat so it is all interrelated so we really have to broaden the way we think and realize that there is more to what we superficially understand and based our conclusion on there is more to that i hope this helps i mean i mean it does uh, we have a, a, co- a comment from um, zinat sahib that the whole universe is in him that means that aqlikul and nafsikul as imam and he is in us as well as an embryonic state yes so we have to activate that light subhanallah yes and then there is another uh, question slash comment um can we say light is through obtaining knowledge but most importantly to put that knowledge into practice subhanallah well said i would say you're absolutely correct friends if you have any other comment or question you can unmute and come forward or if you want to share any of your reflection you can come forward since we have actually ended the book anything comes to your mind you can come forward and share
So I, I would like to just comment, I mean, Saba, with your permission, that I am so grateful to all of you and I'm so truly uh, thankful to you to giving this opportunity to Nachis to study this book with you because it was an amazing journey. With this book, from the beginning when I recall, we started only with 30 minutes and, you know, we continued to go further and further and this book was, I think, uh, needed more time than the numbers of pages this book has. So to, truly, I'm grateful for you all to be here and it is all due to you and the mercy of Imam that we had such a beautiful journey studying this book. Truly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Ameen, Ameen. Um, we have a maybe question or a comment. Um, I will try to read it. Um, yeah, Ali Madad, on one side, Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah Sawad said, in one bandagi farman, and there it's quoted in Gujarati, Jaratame bandagi ma beso to tame himmat rakho, susti chodi apo, ane, ane dunia na khayal tar karo. So my question is that why Imam has named Baitul Khyal practice as Baitul Khyal means house of thoughts. So in if one recites Isam speedily with focus and also making spiritual or botany driven thoughts, please guide which kind of spiritual thoughts or khayala to do with Isam recitation with speed and focus simultaneously. So your question is loaded. Whoever has asked, it's not just one question. There are very many questions within it. And I don't think, <clears throat> very humbly, <clears throat> I will be able to do justice to it because it requires so many concepts to be covered. And it's not that we've not been talking about it. Different lectures have been responding to your loaded question. Um, the simple thing which I would relate to what we have learned today, because we have to really stay connected to what we are learning so we are able to really, you know, uh, take it in our heart. When we understand that Ibadat of Isma Azam or sitting in the Baitul Khyal is actually Nawafil Ibadat. It is not a must Ibadat. It is voluntary. So anyone who comes forward to do more, meaning to do Nawafil Ibadat. Today, right now, we are doing Nawafil Ibadat. This is not compulsory. So we are doing Nawafil Ibadat. And when we are doing Nawafil Ibadat, number one, we are seeking closeness to Imam. We are seeking closeness to Imam, right? When we are sitting in Ibadat, and Ibadat time is called Baitul Khayal, Khayal Ka Ghar. Now, physically, we are expected to recite that Isma Azam. Yali, 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 yali. There's no place of thought because if we make a gap, Shaitan will put his thought, right? So we do not want to stop. We want to do rapidly the zikr, right? The way it is being taught in the Divine Remembrance book. So we have to do the zikr rapidly. But the thing which we have to understand, when we talk of Baitul Khayal, the house of thoughts, tell me, house of thought, is it limited to one hour or 24 hours? You will all say, we think all the time. In fact, during the Ibadat time, we want to stop the thinking so we can focus on zikr, so our mind does not go here and there. Meaning it sounds contradictory, but it is not. What we don't realize that when we are doing zikr, yali, 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 we are nourishing our soul through the power of that kalima. Isma Azam is a supreme name. Bada kaam, right? Bada naam, it's a bowl. Due to the recitation of that Isma Azam, it nourishes our soul. When our soul nourishes it, and we are seeking knowledge as well, we are feeding our intellect as well, the power of that Isma Azam influences us in our 24 hours, helping us enter into that Baitul Khayal, in that house of pox, which has become pure. And if I may relate to another Farman of Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah, Imam in Kalam Imam Mubi, not in Baitul Khayal Farman, he says, he gives us the ex this expectation. He says that I want you to sit in Khayal for two hours. Now, Khayal and Baitul Khayal, are they different? Khayal is thoughts, right? Baitul Khayal is house of thinking or house of thoughts. 
So if you were to connect the farman to farman, you will understand that imams is teaching us, imam's expectation is that when we, during the daytime, when we reflect on our knowledge and our, you know, whatever we are doing, it is expected from us during our 23 hours to spend two hours in reflective thinking, meaning extended Bethul Khaya to more time. Now, when I say more time, remember we are talking about Nawafil Ibadat. When we talk of Nawafil Ibadat, that concept, Ibadat of Isma Azam, doing the zikr in abundance, learning the knowledge, and then reflecting on the knowledge, all this encompasses, all this becomes, you know, within the circle of Khaya. How? Through Nawafil Ibadat. What we are doing? Coming close to him. So I hope it makes sense. There's much more we can discuss, but I hope that I have really given you um, uh, answers. Uh, help you understand the concept. G. I mean, I mean, um, I've, one of the friend actually just commented saying that every day, every moment is a journey to come closer and closer to him. And it's step by step. So, um, friends, we'll take one last comment. Um, okay, there's another question. Can you kindly elaborate a little more by giving examples of awakening of our senses in spiritual aspect, Ruhani aspect, Batani aspect, and Nurani aspect, etc.? So, Nurani is easy. I would not go into detail. It's easy. The reason I say it's easy, because we have to seek knowledge. Without knowledge, without having that base, the foundation, we cannot even comprehend that. So we cannot go there. I don't think we can go there, right? I'm not capable of going there. I would say that. We have to have knowledge. Really, we have to have a good grasp of knowledge. But when we talk of Ruhani senses, because it has been talked about in our Ginans, it has been talked about uh, in the books of Allah Masai, uh, Dreams and Spirituality or Practical Sufism. All those books do talk about uh, Quran and Ismail Azam they do talk about Ruhani Roshni. So it is easier to talk about that because we have examples. And the way today we read that how these senses function, like the way physically we have functions, but spiritually same senses are there. And I gave one example, but for example, you know, if we are sitting in a room, nobody is there. It's quiet outside right now. It's nighttime. But suddenly somebody starts listening to somebody talking. And there's nobody around you, but you're listening very distinctively. Somebody is talking or sometimes even whispering, or you are able to listen to the conversation and understand as well. Though it comes with the step by step in the beginning, it's whispering. In fact, even before that, Quran talks about it's the buzzing of mosquito, meaning somebody's ears, when they start opening up due to their taqwa, their ibadat, nawafil ibadat, their giriya uzari, their abundant zikr, piety, all the criteria. The beginning sound they hear is buzzing of mosquito. And there's no mosquito around you. Where did it come from? But you hear that sound. It could be during your even ibadat time. Because Quran gives us that example. So it's very simple and easy that when Ruhani ears open up, you will hear the sounds which are not physically present around you. Taking it further, you hear somebody whispering, somebody walking, you feel somebody, you hear the footsteps, but there's nobody around you. It's scary as well, right? But when, with knowledge, it becomes easier to stay in acceptance because you are doing all what is required to be doing to realize, you know, the blessings of Ruhani ears. You start listening to conversation and understand what is being talked about. A time comes, may you be able to see somebody. Because there are angels, those homes or those mominins who remain in constant zikr, kiriya uzari. Their homes are filled with angels because angels come and sit with them to listen to the zikr or ibadat. So they are there and they are talking to. Sometimes it may become possible to hear them, to see them, to be able to feel they are touching us sometimes. All these are examples of ruhani senses. Ji.
I mean, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. Thank you, Niamat Saba, for a wonderful session. It was amazing to do the whole uh, book with you and understand it further. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. And inshallah, um, you know, friends will continue to join for the book study. Next week, we will continue Book of Healing. And tomorrow? And tomorrow we will do with Sultanuddin Sahib, 100 questions. Uh, announcement is posted in the chat, friends. Um, thank you, Niamat Saba, once again. Thank you, friends, for joining. Ya Ali Madad, Ya Ali Madad. Ya Ali Madad, Ya Ali Madad. Thank you. Ya Ali Madad. Ya Ali Madad. Ya Ali Madad. Amazing lecture. Shukra Mola, thank you, Ma. Thank you. All due to your prayers. Thank you. Yali Madad. Yali Thank you. Shukra Mola. Yali Madad. Yali Madad. Yali Madad.